Hello, child of God. The purpose of this video is to expose some of the spirits and prophecies behind the meteoric rise of ISIS and of the self-proclaimed jihadi caliphate. Almost everything I show you on this video will be summaries of large portions of Bible text, many years of real history with manifested prophecies, and if you missed something because of the fast pace of this video, please check out the biblical references listed in the description. I'm going to introduce to you several ruling spirits which are working on the earth today to destroy portions of mankind. And I would like to point out that Almighty God promised to never destroy the earth again with a flood. But he has many other forms of judgments on the sins of mankind. Let's take a trip outside of time into eternity in front of the throne of Almighty God. This is where Almighty God sees the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end. First, I'm introducing the next five spirits, which have been given authority by Almighty God Himself to trouble the earth. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We can see the method of operation of this spirit. A cult leader will rise up like Adolf Hitler, Attila the Hun, Joseph Stalin, Pol Pot, the leader of the Khmer Rouge, Vlad the Impeller, and people will follow him, swear their lives to him. He will have a mighty army. He will attack other nations. And history acknowledges him as a cruel conqueror that shows no mercy toward his own people. The next spirit that I'm going to introduce to you is what I consider to be more of a troublemaker spirit than the cult leader spirit that was riding on the white horse. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. This spirit has started many wars among mankind. But in this summary, my example is World War One. World War One was to witness the disintegration of entire nations. In July of 1914, an Austrian prince was assassinated by a Serbian terrorist. The Austrian declaration of war against Serbia came on July the 28th, 1914. American newspapers reported that the entire continent of Europe seemed to be going mad all at once. World War I reveals a surprising picture of global activity. Peace again was taken from the world. Between 1914 and 1918, over a hundred countries from Africa, America, Asia, Austro-Asia, and Europe were part of the conflict. The total number of military and civilian casualties in World War I was over 37 million, ranking it among the deadliest conflicts in human history. As I said, peace was taken away from the world. And I have no doubt that in our generation, the great sword includes nuclear weapons. And soon, there will be a worldwide nuclear war started by some crazy nation like North Korea, who's already threatened the world, or Iran, Iraq, or some terrorist organization. This nuclear war has already been prophesied in the scriptures, and I'll show you more later. The next spirit in this introduction is named Famine. Obviously, Famine would naturally follow the spirit on the white horse and his warfare, and the spirit on the red horse and his warfare. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And Almighty God limits the authority of famine to destroy the earth. The limit is the food will come down to one quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages. And the spirit is not allowed to damage the oil and the wine, meaning the grapevines and the olive trees and the things that grow for many years. Now, in our generation, there's usually a famine somewhere in Africa following some sort of war. But in North Korea, there was no war. The famine followed the cult government of the North Koreans, where somewhere between 200,000 and 3.5 million people died in 1996 just from famine alone. 
The next two spirits that I'd like to introduce to you made a covenant in the Bible in Isaiah 28:18. Basically, they will always ride together. So don't get caught up with whether they're on one horse or two horses or one walking behind the other. The important part is they are always together. They've been jointly given authority by Almighty God. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Death and Hades are also mentioned concerning the resurrection of the dead for the judgment of Almighty God and then the eventual casting of death and Hades in the lake of fire mentioned in Revelation 20:14. However, these two spirits at any one point are limited to one fourth part of the earth. Well, we can see that these spirits have the authority to have wars and famine and disease and kill and so on without the authority of the other three spirits. They are riding as a pair on their own over a quarter portion of the earth. As we study this unusual rise of Isis, let us leave eternity and go way back in time to when the Babylonians were burning the temple on the ninth of Av around the year 586 BCE. Almighty God evicted the Jewish people from Israel for 70 years, and they were scattered into many nations. Michael the archangel is the angelic prince assigned to protect the Jewish people wherever they are. Michael and his angelic force followed the Jews into captivity and gave them protection wherever they went in the world. A vision Daniel had was just a snapshot of the ongoing angelic wars between the angelic force assisting Michael and the angels assisting Satan. The Jews were allowed to return to their homeland in Israel after 70 years of captivity. And they were allowed to remain there until one generation after they murdered the Lord Jesus Christ, their king. The Romans on the ninth of Av in A.D. 70 crucified or enslaved all the Jews and burned the temple. They were crucifying so many Jews that they ran out of crosses and they began nailing the men and women to the walls of the city. Roman law made it illegal for the Jews to live in Israel at all. Again, Michael the archangel and his army went to every place the Jews went. They protected them, they followed them, and they ensured that Almighty God's word would be fulfilled, that they would return to Israel one day. Let us now jump up in time to the blood red moon on December the 21st, 2010. And my beautiful bride will tell you about the beginnings of what the news media calls the Arab Spring. The Muslim hatred for Israel sponsored by Muslim governments has been turned to a religious rage against their own Muslim governments. The total lunar eclipse on December the 21st in 2010 signaled the beginning of the spiritual insurrection against the Muslim leadership. Muslim insurrections began in Tunisia, then moved to Algeria, Lebanon, Jordan, Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Syria, Morocco, Sudan, the Palestinian Authority, Iraq, Bahrain, Libya, Kuwait, the Western Sahara, Iranian Kurdistan, and even among Muslims on the borders of Israel. The nations that sponsored terrorism against Israel are being terrorized and may soon be overthrown and have been overthrown by terrorists. In this picture, we see many of the nations that the Arab Spring involved, where people were overthrowing their governments and destroying each other, and Muslim against Muslim, neighbor against neighbor, civil wars all over the place. As this was going on, Syria had been one of Israel's chiefest opponents, exporting terrorism into Israel year after year for many years since before Israel became a nation. Syria went into their own civil war, and it was neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother, basically the government against its own people. In this power surge going back and forth, the United States and many other European nations got involved in it and were shipping missiles and guns and so on to different parties. Obviously, the best weapons fall in the hands of the worst people. And from this, the terrorists came in and took many of the weapons and carved out a portion of Syria, Iraq, and they call themselves ISIS, the Islamic State of Syria and Iraq. It is notable that these Arab Spring nations that we see in this map, the next map is the ambition of ISIS to make the Islamic State of Syria and Iraq into the Islamic State. But I think it's ironic that this is their goal. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. 
and he was given a great bow. Let's talk about a great bow. ISIS militants captured 52 American-made artillery weapons that cost $500,000 each. They can fire a GPS-directed shell for 20 miles. They have thousands of shells for these 52 155mm M198 Hollister artillery weapons. They also captured 1,500 U.S.-made Humvees, armored Humvees, and 4,000 PKC machine guns that can fire upwards to 800 rounds per minute. We are fighting against our own weapons. But those are just battlefield weapons. That bow that was given to ISIS includes nearly 40 kilograms or 88 pounds of uranium compounds that were kept at Mosul University. When ISIS seized control of 88 pounds, they seized control of weapons of mass destruction. You can take a half an ounce and put it with C4 and create a dirty bomb. You can take an ounce and put it with C4 or an artillery shell and create dirty bombs. You can cause an entire city to have to be evacuated with a half an ounce of uranium material and a pound of C4. It is awesome the bow this ISIS has. It is a spiritual issue going on here. They are moving so rapidly and people are throwing down their guns in front of them and running away from them because they have no mercy and they are trying to impose Sharia law according to the way they think Sharia law should be imposed on their own people and kill everybody else as infidels. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Well, did you ever feel that there were so many countries with so many factions at war at one time, you needed the CIA to fill out a race card for you to see which horse was winning in what race at any one time. The Muslims are estimated to be 25% of the world's population. Of that total Muslim population, 10 to 13% are Shia Muslims, and 87 to 90% are Sunni Muslims. Most Shias, between 68 and 80%, live in just four countries. Iran, Pakistan, India, and Iraq. Now, the Shias and the Sunnis have major differences in theology. Each one thinks they're holier than the other guy. They have the truth. The other guy is not a real Muslim. They will suicide bomb each other. This is especially important on our scorecard when we see that two horses are still running in this race. They have authority over one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with famine, with pestilence, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Does that sound familiar? I remind you of the total Muslim population. 87 to 90 percent are Sunni Muslims. The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria goal is to establish a caliphate in the Sunni majority regions of Iraq and Syria. On June the 29th, 2014, a mini Muhammad, a caliphate, was announced. The Islamic State with a new set of goals. This mini Muhammad is the spiritual leader. He's the military leader. He's Allah's man of the hour on the earth today to lead the Muslim insurrection to destroy all the Shiite Muslims, all the infidels, and take over the entire world. You probably understand that this doesn't go over very well with the minority, which are Shias. Shias are being exterminated in the Sunni majority areas. The Shias that control nations like Iran and Pakistan are very unhappy with the Sunni Muslims that are planning to exterminate them. So what we see all in all is the nations that exported terrorism to Israel and to other nations, terrorism is being exported to them. The governments that rose up against Israel have their own people rising up against them. The governments that exported terrorism are receiving terrorism. This is one of the greatest in time spiritual battles of our generation. At this point, I need to sum up the hundreds of end time scriptures, historical confirmations of fulfilled prophecies, and jump along to Almighty God's end game.
We know a small portion of Almighty God's plan and purpose for sending these spirits, so I'd like to review a few. First, destroy the wicked from the face of the earth. Mankind will almost totally be exterminated during these next few years. Just read the book of Revelation. Second, force the return of the Jews to Israel. There's hundreds of scriptural references on that. Third, send the Holy Spirit to Ezekiel's temple in Jerusalem to prepare the Israeli Jews for the Messiah. Most of that is covered in Ezekiel's chapter 38 through 44. Fourth, send the Lord Jesus Christ to Israel to rule the planet. That's all over the Bible. You have seen the path these spirits are taking to accomplish God's first purpose, and that is exterminating the evil mankind from the earth, leaving only a remnant, where the caliphate will be destroyed when someone destroys Babylon with a nuclear bomb. Let's look at the second purpose, bringing the world's Jews back to Israel. I'll admit it's sheer speculation, but it's speculation based on the evidence of the signs of the times in the scriptures. We will probably see the collapse of the U.S. economy on or before the 13th of September 2015, the 29th of Elul 2015. Following the collapse of the U.S. economy will be the collapse of the world economy and then a worldwide depression. The ruling spirits will again blame the Jews in the world and drive them out of their countries. There may be also masses of Jews trying to escape the dirty bombs set off in New York City, New York State, and other places outside of Israel. Israel with high concentrations of Jews. And Almighty God will make Israel the safest place on earth for the Jews. In the world, there are roughly 13,859,800 Jews. There's roughly 1,105,700 Jews in the EU. 6,700,000 Jews in the U.S. And we love them. That leaves in the rest of the world less than 1 million Jews. Well, in New York State, there lives around 2 million Jews. This is a scale map of the state of New York and the nation of Israel. We can question now, how does Almighty God drive the Jews that are sitting fat, dumb, and happy in some of the richest people in the entire world in New York State and the surrounding states? What can happen? What can be done? Dirty bombs, gas, disease, the government turns against them. There are many things that can happen, many ways these spirits can turn the hearts of Americans against the Jews and the hearts of the Jews to leave the United States and Canada and the the friendly nations of the world and return to Israel where Almighty God wants them. Moving on to the third purpose, Almighty God will force Russia to lead Iran and many other Muslim nations to attack Israel and then he will save Israel by destroying Gog and Magog with an earthquake, fire, brimstone, hail, knock the missiles out of the air and so on, which is explained in Ezekiel 38, 39, and 40 as the Gog and Magog War. Israel would then have seven years of peace to make it a national priority to bury the dead, to clean up, to build Ezekiel's temple, and then to receive the Holy Spirit into Ezekiel's temple. At the same time, in other places in the world, Almighty God will allow the two final Antichrists to arise and build their empire of ten nations. Eventually, the first beast is killed, and the second beast, or Antichrist, makes an image of the first beast that can walk and talk. Doesn't that sound a lot like a computerized robot that has enough computer chips and so on to simulate a human ruler, like a computerized clone of the first beast and so on. Little sci-fi for you. Child of God, we have reached the end of part one. And part two is a lot more terrifying than part one. If you would like to hear the prophecies concerning Michael the Archangel, the extermination and martyrdom of Christians and Jews all over the world during the rise of this Antichrist and the coming world wars, then click the little arrow, which is a link to the next video. Please pray that Almighty God will teach us both and open our eyes to see the continuous spiritual warfare going on in the world during our generation. Jesus told us that we should pray that we could escape this coming tribulation and stand before the Son of Man. God bless you.